Hey there, everyone. Dave Barlow here with the gang from Sell for One Percent, and we also have our lovely guest who uh, apparently is trying to show everybody he can still grow some hair on his face. <laughs> oh my, yeah. You know, it's all it's all sliding down, Dave. <laughs> yeah. There's all kinds of comedians out there. It, yeah, it just it falls down. You know, it doesn't grow where you want it to. It's like grass. You know, you work like crazy to keep the grass from the cracks of your sidewalks and things like that. And it's like, but you got big barren spots in your front yard. It's like, what, <laughs> what's going on here? I don't understand. This. Yeah. I've got a pretty big barren spot up here. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Hey, Rich, thanks for joining us here this morning. Uh, we're going to talk interest rates and it's been kind of, I mean, I, I said last week that we were on a roller coaster, but I don't know. It seems like maybe we're on a cliff or something. I think we're on a mountain climb at this point. Yeah, it's crazy. What's going on yeah. out there? Well, I mean, we're, Dave, we're just not getting any uh, any uh, positive numbers in terms of interest rates. The economic uh, data all is uh, leading the uh, economists to believe that the Fed will continue to raise rates, uh, and uh, there's no there's no total guidance as to when that will stop. Uh, uh, we got uh, more inflationary numbers last week. The PMI number was inflationary. Uh, today we had jobless claims came in weaker, less less jobless claims than what they thought. Uh, that's, that's inflationary. And also the GDP number came in. The headline number was revised down from 2.9 to 2.7 which uh, should have uh, on, on the surface been a positive uh, indication. However, and I don't understand this completely, but there are some inflationary components within that number. And apparently the, uh, the sectors of that number that, that have, uh, uh, you know, uh, like for instance, the, the grocery items or things like that are still pointing inflationary. So even though the headline number was slightly lower than expected the overall data still was pointing inflationary so um the 30-year fixed rate continues to go up uh and uh we're at 6.75 percent is what the rate would be today on the, the baseline rate 675. Uh, if, now uh, you have good credit that's yeah that's one of the things i wanted to maybe uh let the listeners know is that it's getting harder and harder to just call a lender up. It always was difficult, but it's getting more difficult to call a lender up and say, what's your rate? Uh, there's about 15 questions that need to be answered before a lender can truly give you a rate these days. What is your credit score? How much are you putting down? How much are you borrowing? Uh, you know, uh, what is your debt to income ratio, which has to be calculated according to the standard guidelines. So it just goes on and on with questions that need to be answered. Are you doing a conventional? Are you doing an FHA? Are you doing a VA? What type of loan do you have? How, what, you know, all those questions need to be answered prior to really quoting a solid rate to somebody. But when I say six, seven, five, that's somebody with good credit, getting a nice size loan and, um, you know, with a, with a healthy down payment, basically. So that's where we are. So really in about a week and a half, two weeks, we went from 5.875, 6.125, and we've jumped three quarters of a point in right. about a week or so, right? In February the 3rd, I believe it was, because I can remember where we were at 5875. And where are we? February, what is this, the 23rd? Yeah. So in less than three weeks, we've gone up seven eighths of a point essentially almost a full point and it's all just based on what everybody thinks is going to happen in the future which right now is still pointing at high inflation they yeah they don't see anything in the economic numbers that would lead them to believe the fed will cap the brakes and stop raising rates sometime in 2023 at this point and so you know back in november we were about this same spot, uh, right around 7% was the peak at about the third week of November, if I remember correctly. You know, we had quote unquote, you know, I don't want to say experts. We had, you know, people 
saying that, well, you know, uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and, you know, everybody else is saying, yeah, by the time we get to March, April, uh, rates will be down in the, the mid to low fives. And so here we are. Here we are. Yeah. We're at six. Well, we, you five. know, the way the roller coaster ride goes, we're not at March, April yet. So, you know, we okay. could take a, we well, could I, take that whole. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to say that too. Know. Well, because three weeks ago, Rich, I know that you had mentioned when the numbers came in that the Fed at their press conference had indicated that they're not going to raise anything past probably another half or three quarters of a point. And then two weeks later, we're here with new numbers and new information. So, yeah, I mean, th things can always change. I did have a question. I was curious um, if you know this across the board nationwide or just within you know, your brokerage. What are the mortgage applications look like uh, percentage wise year over year? Do you have any of that information? Uh, that's a difficult uh, question to answer, Mike. I'm not trying to avoid it. But uh, last year at this time, we had a lot of refinance applications. So yeah. there's that's 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 gone from, you know, whatever number it was to zero, pretty much. I mean, you know, you have uh, very few people refinancing only if they're adjusting on their arm or they need a, what they call a cash out refinance where they're going to pull equity out of the property and uh, even those people are reluctant to do that because if you have a two or three or even a four percent rate why would you refinance to a high six rate just to get 20 or 30 or 40 thousand so uh, so the refinance activity is slow to a, a halt. Now, when it when we talk about, uh, you know, I can only talk about myself, and of course. I know that I know nationwide numbers are down. I mean, the mortgage yeah. applications are down. There's no way that they're up from last year. But uh, I have a lot of people, quote unquote, applying. They're sitting in my pipeline with no property to buy or can't make a decision to buy right now. Uh, either gotcha. they can't find a property or they they don't like the price or they don't like the payment or all three of those things maybe uh so well the so other thing, you know i still have a healthy pipeline it's just that people aren't really buying for whatever reason sorry dave go ahead oh it's all right i was just going to say you know the interesting correlation between you know the peak of interest rates back in november is that in the columbus mls since november we've lost a third of active listings in the MLS. So we had about 3,300 active listings back in November, and we have less than 2,000 active wow. listings today. In fact, so, this, morning's, this morning's number, we have 1,927 active listings in the entire MLS, and that goes from Marion down to Chillicothe, from Newark over to, um, not quite to uh, Springfield. London. In, in Franklin County, there's 783 active listings in all of Franklin County. And so wow. I think we're seeing the same thing on the seller side where a seller is saying, I've got a 3% interest rate. Why in the world would I sell my house and go buy something else and, and get a 6.75% interest rate? I, I have no need of that. But the good news is, here's the good news, is that MORPC uh, through Business First just uh, published uh, yesterday, I think it was, or maybe a couple of days ago, that in the next 25 years here in Central Ohio, they will see 726,000 new residents in Central Ohio. That's so, great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, an additional 272,000 houses will be built in the next 25 years here in Central Ohio. So, you know, that's good news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Dave, what is what would be considered a healthy amount of uh, active listings in MLS for, the, for our population? Well, I mean, your equilibrium, you're trying to get them, you know, 45 to 60 days on market. And, you know, back a year ago, we were like down to 12 days on market. And that's because we had way too many buyers trying to purchase because the interest rates were 
at two and three quarters and you know to three three and an eighth or whatever the numbers were right. so there was a ton of buyers in the market soaking up any listing that came on the market uh like i say in today's world we just don't have as many listings coming on the market um now i will tell you over the weekend uh, I was fortunate that uh, I just put my fifth house in, mar in contract uh, yesterday from the weekend. And um, I had two of the five go multiple bid. And so, you know, now it wasn't last year's multiple bid where you had 20 offers. I had, well, in one I had five offers and in the other one I had three. But, um, you know, listings are hard to come by and, you know, for a healthy market, um, you know, two years ago, we got down to like 500 active listings in Franklin County. Um, yeah. You know, we would, we would like to see, I would like to see five to 6,000 active listings, I think would be a, probably a good number. So we're in Franklin like, County, five or 6,000. No, in the whole, in all the MLS. Yeah. So we're at 1927. So, you know, we'd have to, almost triple that number to get get yeah, when I there's an equilibrium but I've never seen it above 4500 I uh when I got in in 2018 we were around 40 yeah 44 4500 so I've actually in my career here have never seen what's considered a stable or healthy inventory market so yeah like yeah. Say, to Dave's point I I have you know, one one listing over the weekend, I guess two, um, go multiple offers. Yeah. One in London and one in South Bloomfield. And so that's not, you know, in the heart of the city and they're still getting multiple offers. So yeah, I, so I, I think, think we're seeing, yeah we're seeing more, yeah, we're seeing more buyers come into the market as we typically do in the spring, but at 6.75%, we may see a, a few a percentage point or two less than what we would what we would like to have for sure so of course all right richard thank you sir you're welcome always happy to be here thank yep, you guys sure. good luck on that uh, chin hair you got going there <laughs> well uh you know uh, I'll, I'll keep it trimmed up for you dave <laughs> <laughs> have a great day thanks a lot guys. have a good one okay